Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture readings today come from the book of Exodus. chapter 1, verses 8 through 14, and chapter 2, verses 23 through 25. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, Join our enemies and fight against us and escape from this land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out, Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, most of you know that I grew up on a farm in East Tennessee. My family and I lived on the farm with my great aunts and uncles close, and every Sunday we would gather at someone's house for Sunday dinner. There was a grown-up table with all the adults, and then there was the kid table where I sat, and we would all talk The adults would talk about what had happened in their weeks, and we would too. Of course, our conversations usually included things like how many frogs we'd seen in the creek that week, or whether there was new hay to play on in the barn, or things like that. So we sat around, we talked, we ate some of the best food you've ever put in your mouth. And then, after lunch the older generation would go sit in the living room and read the Sunday paper. Now, it wouldn't take long for them to start talking about whatever it was that they'd found to read in the paper that sparked their interest that day. And then, like clockwork, they started telling stories. Whatever they were talking about would remind them of life when they were growing up, remembering older generations, remembering stories their grandparents told them. And they would talk for hours. I love to sit in the middle of the room reading the comics. No, I was listening. And I sat on the floor at the coffee table and listened. Because it seemed, no matter what was going on in the world, there was always a story from the past that gave them hope. 
and they were happy to share it with each other again and again. So this morning we began a new year, a new journey, a new sermon series. Yes. (laughs) Well, after 2020, which I know we were glad to see go, I think if we're being honest, we're a little wary of what 2021 holds. We're living in unprecedented times. Don't you look forward to not hearing that phrase again? And with information coming at us from every direction, it's hard to know which way is up. And it's almost impossible to feel confident in a path forward. And for so many this year, that path forward means we're forging one without a beloved friend or family member. It feels like we're wandering in the wilderness. Looking back on this past year, I can't tell you how many times I've longed to sit on the floor of the living room again to hear what they would be saying about what's going on in our world. I wish that for all of us. And friends, God knew that that was what we needed. So, God gave us our stories. Our Bible is full of stories. Prayers, songs, laments, Reading our Bible gives us a chance to hear the stories of those who have walked this journey before us. It gives us a chance to hear their struggles, but also to hear their hope and joy. To hear about God's presence with them in the midst of their day-to-day lives. So this month, we're going to spend some time with Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. We're going to spend some time with their pain, but also learn some lessons and live in their hope. I want to read one more passage for you today. It's from the beginning of Exodus, chapter 1. Nope, strike that. It's from the middle of Exodus, chapter 13, verses 17 through 22. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines, although that was nearer. For God thought if the people face war, they may change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people by the roundabout way of the wilderness towards the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt prepared for battle. And Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you must carry my bones with you from here. They set out from Succoth and camped in Etham on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and by night. Friends, God goes before the Hebrew people and he never leaves them. But they're approaching the wilderness and things don't look good. But God leaves the Israelites or leads the Israelites into the wilderness to keep them away from war, knowing it would be too much. They've just escaped generations of slavery. But the wilderness is scary. It's unknown. Literally, it's a remote, isolated place. 
It's rustic, primitive, uncharted, unfamiliar, certainly not at all comfortable. And metaphorically, well, it's much of the same. When our lives feel isolated, when we're down to tending only our basic needs of food, shelter, clothing, when life is unfamiliar, uncomfortable, and uncharted. We've all spent some time in the wilderness before, and many of us feel that way now. You see, the world as we know it right now is in the midst of a global pandemic. Cobb County reported a record number of 645 new cases of COVID-19 on Friday, and Fulton County reported 828. As we leave an unbelievably difficult year, the reality that we face is that 2021 is beginning in the wilderness. We are all living and working, worshiping, even grocery shopping in ways we couldn't have imagined a year ago. And we know from our scripture reading today, the Israelites knew something about pain and difficulty. They knew a lot about having their lives turned upside down by circumstances out of their control. They knew what it felt like to see no end in sight and to struggle to see hope. Generations had lived in Egypt, and while God had promised to deliver them from this oppression, it wasn't going to be easy. But the pain and the suffering the Israelites had was real. And it was a strong motivator to make a change. So God led the people out of Egypt and away from the war and into the wilderness. Having suffered, they were ready to change. And friends, when we're honest with ourselves about our feelings, about our pain, about the state of our world and lives, it's probably time that we open ourselves up to the possibility of change. You see, our emotions, our feelings, are a gift. God gave them to us to know how we're doing. And we have access to that information all the time. If we're happy and we're at peace, we know we're safe and cared for. If we're sad, it means our heart is longing for something we love and care deeply for. If we're angry or hurting, it's because the circumstances we're in aren't sustainable and change is needed. That change that's needed sometimes means ourselves. We need to change. Our attitudes need adjusting. Our perspectives may need to be broadened. Our hearts may need to be softened. Our eyes may need to be opened to new ways of life. Sometimes it means we need to put one foot in front of the other and get through whatever difficult situation we're in in order for things to improve, to make the world a better place for our children and our grandchildren. So here we are in the wilderness. Thank goodness we're in it together. I'm grateful for the opportunities we have to care for one another and to learn and serve together, albeit in new ways. I'm grateful for the opportunities that we have to gather for virtual coffee each week to laugh and pray together. So as we embark on this journey together, we need to remember that the Israelites weren't the only ones who spent time in the wilderness. 
the Spirit guided Jesus into the wilderness when he came face to face with temptation and struggle. Yet in his 40 days of fasting, resisting, wandering, Jesus is shaped and formed for ministry. Similarly, through this wilderness journey, we are invited to surrender to the wild things of the Spirit. We rarely enter the wilderness willingly, but hopefully through our wandering, we can remember who we are and whose we are. The wilderness can become sacred even if it remains dangerous, uncomfortable, uncharted because there is no wilderness space too harsh or too threatening for the love of God. It's my prayer that this wilderness journey, that our faith is born, nurtured, challenged, and resurrected. Amen. We're glad that you joined us in the sanctuary at Northwest Presbyterian Church. I hope that you found a sustaining and life-giving and challenging word from God. If you liked what you heard, I hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the like button also and the notification icon so you can get uploaded not only the latest services, but other videos that we send during the week. Whether you are from Atlanta or you're watching us from far away, we're glad that you're part of our church family. And I hope to see you back here soon. Until then, take care and God bless.